This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 258, The Planning Fallacy by Eliezer Yudkowsky with IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Living Daily, the podcast that brings you the best in personal development and productivity every day of the week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Justin Mollick. What's going on, Life Optimizer? You're listening to Optimal Living Daily, and I'm Justin Mollick, your very own personal narrator for amazing blogs and completely free of charge, unless you want to contribute financially, which is always greatly appreciated. And today I'm reading from a guest post on IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com, so not the usual Ramit Sethi post. The guest poster, Eliezer Yudkowsky, is a research fellow of the Singularity Institute for Artificial Intelligence, smart man. He also blogs at OvercomingBias.com, so you can check that out too. His site's devoted to human rationality and the cognitive psychology of mistakes, which could fit pretty well with his podcast. I'll have to read more of his stuff. But for now, let's hear his guest post and start optimizing your life. The Planning Fallacy by Eliezer Yudkowsky with IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com The Sydney Opera House is among the most epic construction overruns of all time. Initially slated to be completed in 1963 for $7 million, it was finally completed in 1973 for $102 million. But don't look down on them. Experiment shows that deep in our hearts, we all have an inner home improvement contractor. One study asked students when they thought they'd complete their academic projects. Specifically, the students were asked for times by which they thought it was 50%, 75%, and 99% probable they would have finished already. Care to guess how many students finished on or before their estimated 50%, 75%, and 99% certain delivery dates? If so, better guess now because I'm about to tell you. 13% of the students finished their project by the time they had assigned a 50% probability. 19% finished by the time assigned a 75% probability. And only 45%, less than half, finished by the time of their 99% probability. This phenomenon is more generally known as the planning fallacy. Roughly, the planning fallacy is that people think they can plan. A clue to the underlying problem was uncovered by researchers who found that asking subjects for their predictions based on realistic best-guess scenarios versus asking subjects for their hoped-for best-case scenarios produced indistinguishable results. See, when you ask someone for a quote-unquote realistic scenario, they envision every event happening the way they think is normal, which usually means just like I planned it. No unexpected delays, no unforeseen catastrophes. What people envision by default is the best case scenario. Reality, it turns out, usually delivers results somewhat worse than the worst case. When you ask people to envision everything that can possibly go wrong, their schedule gets a lot closer to reality, but still not close enough. Unlike most cognitive biases, the planning fallacy has a simple remedy, though I'll warn you, you're not gonna like it. The same researchers asked another group of students to describe highly specific plans for their Christmas shopping, plans that described where, when, and how. Another group was simply asked when they expected to finish their Christmas shopping. The first group, with the detailed plans, expected to finish shopping more than a week before Christmas. The second group expected to finish an average of four days before Christmas. And in reality, both groups finished an average of three days before Christmas, That's right, detailed planning made the students more optimistic. Why? Another study done in Japan helps to eliminate the answer. A group of Japanese students expected to finish their essays on average 10 days before the deadline. They actually finished one day before deadline. Asked when they'd finished previous essays, they said one day before deadline. You see, you do have a reliable source of information about how well you'll do. It's how well you did last time but the more details you visualize, the more chance you have to be optimistic. To visualize everything going exactly as planned, instead of remembering how long it took last time when things didn't go as planned. A similar finding is that experienced outsiders who don't know all the details and all the special reasons why this project is bound to do unusually well, but who do have a lot of experience on projects in that area, tend to be a lot less optimistic and a lot more accurate than the actual planners and implementers. The inside view is when you generate your predictions and time estimates by thinking about all the unique details of how it's gonna go this time, planning where, when, and how. The outside view is when you deliberately avoid thinking about the special features of this project, deliberately avoid fine-tuning your estimate, and remember how long it took you to finish broadly similar projects in the past. The inside view has its uses. 
There's a certain amount to be said for, like actually planning things and stuff, but figuring out how long your project will really take is not one of those uses. For schedule estimates, the outside view beats the inside view, hands down every time. So there's a reliable way to fix the planning fallacy if you've got the strength to stomach it. Just ask how long it took you the last few times without considering any of the special reasons this project will be different. Better yet, ask an experienced outsider how long broadly similar projects have taken and be sure not to tell them the details. You'll get back an answer that sounds hideously long and clearly reflects no understanding of all sorts of important particulars. The answer is true. Deal with it. You just listened to the post titled The Planning Fallacy by Eliezer Yudkowsky with IllTeachYouToBeRich.com. I'm sure many of you could relate to this. I know I did. I was just working on a project, well, for the last three months or so, when I expected it would take only one month. I blamed it on my not being a great planner, you know, being a P in the ISTP of the Myers-Briggs personality type, which means I tend to be more spontaneous and I don't like sticking to a schedule. But this post shows that it's not really all about that. And this was very enlightening for me. It made a lot of sense. And I am trying to start another project for you. I don't know how I'll find the time, but I want to make it happen. So I better get working on that. But really quick before we go, if you want to help support this show and really the other two podcasts we have in this family, if you come by oldpodcast.com slash support, I have a list of different things that help a lot to keep this project going. You can always contribute financially, but there are also a bunch of free things that help. So please, if you want to show some love, come by oldpodcast.com slash support or just oldpodcast.com and look for the how to help page. I'll leave it at that. I'll be back tomorrow with one of our minimalist authors. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.